You're editing, aren't you, KJ? I'm editing. You hosted last week, though, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> okay, so it must be Hovar, then. Fun <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this road on the show. Welcome to this week's episode of Number One Food Mistakes Podcast with Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Food But Deficient, and myself, uh, Harvey from Behind the Mistakes, <laughs> live from Rome. <laughs> Welcome, guys. <laughs> you, Hello. You would always think that this was a bad audio episode, but no, no. <laughs> Oh, we just have a, a remote reporter in Rome. It's uh, it's very much going to be a bad audio uh, inspired <laughs> section with a lot of lag <laughs> and a lot so, of honking and ambulances and swearing Italian. So, are you coming live from a street corner? Yeah, actually, it's a, it's a street. No, it's it's a staircase in an alleyway leading out to the main road past our hotel. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I do wonder if you'll get arrested or moved on before the end of the episode. I'm more. Uh, I mean, there is a lot of open windows here into apartments into this back alleyway, so, so someone is getting a live preview of a one third of a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that's wonderful. <laughs> and then there's the. I mean. When I started walking outside the hotel, I was at 98% on my phone. I'm now down to 90. So this this might be the, the shortest episode we've ever done. But... Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> hey, so, if it doesn't work out, we can always do the half pint another day. Yeah. Yeah, we might, we might for, even for battery reasons, we, we might want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> So let's let's not just chit chat uh, away. So how's your week been? <laughs> go on, KJ. You can go first. Uh, my week's been uh, pretty pretty good. Uh, finished a uh, scrapwood project, and uh, what did I do more? Yeah, some uh, the last uh, bits of of gardening fixes uh, before the winter. I think, yeah, almost all of them. Uh, so that felt good. Uh, I did some additions to the, uh, the, what do you call it, parking separation I made, the, the steel plate. Uh, oh, okay. I actually, I, I welded in some fixes. Uh, it was getting quite dark when I did it, so <laughs> it was really a, a, a aim and hope for the best kind of welding job. But I bet visually it looked great, didn't it? Yeah, it was a nice glow. So you could, you could more see what you've done after the fact because all the piece was glowing. So, yeah. So that was that was nice. And uh, I mean, the the short that I did for the scrap wood build-off, that took off rather nicely, I think. I, I wanted to talk to you about the shorts. You're quite good at them, aren't you, KJ? I, I mean, I... I don't know. I don't watch them. <laughs> <laughs> but they get views and they get you a couple of subscribers each time, don't they? Yeah, apparently. I think this was <laughs> 6.4 thousand views. <laughs> and I think like six subscribers or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. I, it honestly it make it does make me wonder why we do full length videos. <laughs> Yeah, kind of. I, I mean, it's probably mostly Hover's <laughs> title, Banana Handle, that I put on it. That's probably <laughs> what sold it. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're being shouted at now, Hover. Well, oh, there, there is a posse of people. Uh, yeah, there's probably a group jogging session. So there is one very energetic person in front shouting and people probably <laughs> just running behind her hating her <laughs> ah. yeah. i was going to suggest that you join them but if she's shouting maybe not yeah I, i'm not in the i'm not in the shape to do a running podcast <laughs> i mean uh, that, that's going to be too much asmr for anyone <laughs> what do you think she's shouting at them quick hurry up if you complete this you can have a nice gelato or something like that <laughs> I have no idea. 
<laughs> we haven't picked up the language. Well, we've no, been there a couple of days. And it is weird because people keep talking English to me. I mean, do I look like a tourist? <laughs> 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 ah. I mean, you, you look like you stepped straight out of the Godfather movie. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which which godfather was that that Havar was in? <laughs> was it the third or the fourth or something? <laughs> in really, the really fairy godfather. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> uh, the ginger godfather. That's a that's a completely <laughs> different movie. Brilliant. So what about you, Glenn? Uh, since we last spoke, all I have done is edited a video, basically. So I, would, I had to wait a few days before I could film the last bit of footage I wanted um, because my filming partner wasn't feeling up to it until four days later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, I waited for Michelle to be ready to do the uh, other part of the film. And then I have this stupid thing where I, was, I, I couldn't continue with the edit until I'd got that. And I've been unable to start any other project until I've edited the video. So, yeah, it's all just been about editing a, a long video for me. And it was a, a bit of an awkward one to edit, I'll be honest. <laughs> it took her a while to wash her hair. <laughs> it did. It really did. <laughs> 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 yeah, but the video tur turned out great, I think. Yeah, did you like it? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I Am I the only one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I think 17 other people have liked it. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it, I've had no Australians like it yet either, so. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's done better than my last few videos on uh, views. Um, I only changed the, num the thumbnail three times on it. <laughs> I've seen that on a lot of YouTubers. Once they start bringing their wives into the videos, I mean, they get exponentially more popular, and then you get all the comments like, you should uh, put your wife more in the video, and then, why don't your wife just do the video and <laughs> you piss off? <laughs> <laughs> I actually think she should, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. I think she'd be far better than me. <laughs> No, like I say, it was a, a bit of a, a bugger to um, edit, but I got there in the end and got it out, and the results haven't been too bad. So that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, quite pleased with it. Yeah, you should be. Yeah, good, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, but the table did look a lot like cheese in the, <laughs> uh, in the middle there before you plug the holes. <laughs> when it got the holes in, yeah, it looked, did it like Swiss cheese, didn't it? When you yeah. suggested a Swiss cheese board. I thought, that, I thought that was a great idea, KJ. Yeah, you made them look really tasty also when they were sanded. And, yeah. I might have been hungry when I watched the video. That, that could have been it. Did it put you off it when I turned it into brown cheese when I put the Rubio on? <laughs> <laughs> That's when I've all got interested. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, it's, um, it's the brown cheese table now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You've got a real of that video because I was putting my oldest to bed and she wanted to watch uh, one short video on YouTube and of course uh, I got my phone up and I oh is that Glenn and I just pressed on it and she's like oh that's oh I bet it's a table what's that oh holes are oh, cool and then very <laughs> smugly at the end it's like I knew it was a table. <laughs> and she was like, oh, what's that? And that's so cool. And she was really into that video. So I was just just watching her, watching the video, having a blast. <laughs> so, so you got the live reaction video out of it. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. So do I need to click the made for kids thing then? Is that my audience? Yeah, I mean, you, you could. <laughs> I never But then you wouldn't get any comments. I don't mind who watches it. Robots, people, kids, <laughs> animals. <laughs> and if any of those things could uh, subscribe at the same time, that would be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Animal subscription service. That would be something, yeah. Yeah, I like animals. They should 
like me back, surely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they can sense it through the screen. You, yeah. could, you could make a new service instead of YouTube. It could be Yusu. Just say that again, Hovar. And instead of making, uh, I mean, posting on YouTube, you could make an entirely new service called Yusu. Like Sue. Oh, Zoo. Yeah. Oh, Sue. <laughs> yeah. For all the for all the dogs and the cat videos, I think it would be all okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for a second there. I thought you were. I thought you said you Sue. I thought that's a really niche channel for everybody called Sue. <laughs> oh, I, I thought it was the le the legal action. <laughs> it yeah. sounded really American. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty close to the the one we got there, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all, all, only legal videos. Yeah, that that would be fun. <laughs> so what about you, Havar? What have you been up to? <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty about? obvious, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I've been stuck in Rome for three to four days, and, which is nice, but I have stuff to do in my workshop, and I do have a Christmas movie I need to edit, but I am at that point where I just need to edit the rest of the videos, so I just have to film myself playing a lot of instruments and then of course if there's going to be a collaboration or not i'm not sure i'm going to have to send a new video to uh, to ask for some uh, for some input if not it's going to be a one-man show and uh yeah it's going to be a couple of interesting yeah. weeks <laughs> i was actually talking to steve on sunday because yeah. i'm doing a little job for him next next weekend and um he listens to the podcast now regularly and he said um if Havar wants any help with his uh little music thing I uh, he's happy to help with with it if you need any if you need anything <laughs> if you need it layering up or anything <laughs> what i need i need everything <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll put you in touch he'd, he'd, he'd probably really quite like to to do that with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, there is a few quiet bits where I thought it would be nice to have a proper recorder player playing, but I got everything else covered except, of course, the hell quarter sounding like the hell quarter. So it's going to be a, it's a nice song up until a terrible <laughs> finish. But that's, I mean, what do what do you, you said expect? that the point? Yeah, that's yeah, it's exactly yeah. the point. So I, I I shouldn't think too much of it. It's it is what it is. Um, and of course, I fucked up that with. Uh, I'm also doing the scrap wood build off, which I thought I wouldn't be doing, but then I'm making the Maui uh, fish hooks uh, because the deadline aligns with the release of the Moana 2 movie, so I'm making that for my daughters as well. And of course, I have shown them to them, so they know that they are under development, so I can't really back out. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I had no problem stitching the scrap with build off if I couldn't meet the deadline, but I have now two executive officers uh, lingering over me, making sure that this project gets done. So <laughs> yeah, that, that's quite serious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're nearly done, aren't they now? Yeah, I before I went uh, away on vacation, I put down some white paint as a base coat, and I need a few more layers, and then. It's time to do like Bobby Duke did that he spray painted the, the brown paint and then of course he used a rag to wipe it off so that only the inscriptions are painted. And then of course uh, my oldest daughter, she wanted to help so I'm going to learn how to use, use the spray can. So it's going to be a collaboration. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Nice. So maybe, I'm, maybe I'm making a graffiti artist, I do not know, but I'm going to show a six-year-old how to use a spray can. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you lock your spraying cans yeah. <laughs> securely. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to come home to a really nicely decorated house, I think. Yeah. Well, ooh. no, I have to redact that because they have actually tried it before. Because my wife was, uh, she bought a can of uh, like some rust prevention and they were allowed to have at it at her car. So they have actually tried it before. Ah. So it's not your fault. Good. No. <laughs> I wasn't the gateway drug. Well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I can remember, I think it was either last year or the year before, um, I was in control of Lily for the day and I wanted to do something in the workshop. And um, 
just to entertain her, I put a, an old scrap piece of plywood up outside and gave her a can of black aerosol to go out. She had a great time. <laughs> so as soon yeah. as it dried, she'd just have another go. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we actually started building a cat house um, because I had some scrap wood laying around and it was a, a good opportunity to practicing just hammering nails. So we were just putting boards across each other and just hammering in small nails. And that worked out perfectly. I mean, we're not done yet because we have the attention span of a six-year-old, but at, at least she <laughs> knows we what... All? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't we all? <laughs> but I mean, at least she knows what's the right way around the hammer. Uh, so that's, then that's something. So, yeah. yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Speaking of kids and, and, and hammers, uh, when my youngest saw me editing the Scrap with Build-Up video, he asked what I had made, and I said... A hammer handle, and he replied, "You already have a hammer handle." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Thanks for the for the feedback. <laughs> so, are your kids are your kids still using their tool wall, KJ, in your workshop? I mean, they're not using it that much. <clears throat> they know where it is, and I mean, they have used it some, I think, but. I mean, YouTube is more interesting than the tools for them at the moment for them. Uh, YouTube and Nerf guns and and Lego. Fair enough. Have they not got into uh, tuning up the Nerf guns yet? Uh, no, no, they they no. they're quite powerful enough for them. <laughs> oh, there's some there's some fun to be had with that in the future. Something you could get involved with as well. Yeah, when they when they <laughs> consider them to be boring, then we can can yeah. start that. <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah, great fun. Yeah, we've dismantled them, open valves up, put more powerful batteries in them, give them given them resprays in the past. <laughs> all went to all went to going towards my son wanting to become a soldier, I think. So <laughs> it sounds very much like it. Yeah. <laughs> so have you started the robotic hand yet? Uh yes. Yes, I am I am working on it. Uh and for that I, I changed uh the blades on my bandsaw to a, a multi-material one or something. Yeah, a, a one that could cut metal. Yeah, and that worked like a dream. And also, <laughs> the bandsaw works so much better with a good blade on it <laughs> That's than, amazing. The, than, than the stock one that was on it for a long time. How um, many years? Yeah, I don't want to think about that, and <laughs> and the fact that I bought the bandsaw blades. Almost three years ago. Oh no! <laughs> and it took me a while to put them on. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. So so now I have a metal bandsaw uh, instead. So that's that's nice. Fantastic. Um, what sort of progress have you made? Do you think have you have you literally just started, or are you halfway through, a quarter of the way through, or? Uh, I am almost done with all the parts for the fingers. Wow. Uh, but I have yet to uh, figure out how to do the palm, and okay. and, uh, and I mean I have an idea of it, but I'm not sure that it's going to work. Maybe it works flawlessly on the first try, or maybe it it fails miserably. <laughs> it's going to be a surprise for everyone. <laughs> Are you welding it together, or is it bolted? Or oh, it's bolted. Oh, okay, well, at least you can go back then, can't you? Uh, bolted and and press fit. Uh, so yeah. yeah. I'm I'm considering if I should perhaps solder it together because it's a mix of uh, aluminium and copper and steel and all sorts of things. So uh, okay. there's no chance of building it. Uh, but no. so far, I think it will do with just uh, uh, bolts and press fits. But yeah. we'll see. That sounds cool. Can't wait for that one. Yeah, it's probably going to fail miserably now that I talk so much about it, but... <laughs> then that's a failed project. It's also a project. It is. A, we will, we will, well, I don't know if, it's a, if Avara's shared failed projects, but I certainly have. Um, so yeah, it's, I think that's okay. It's fair to do. You can't not talk about them just in case they don't work, can you? <laughs> well, it, it, it has worked for me so far in my YouTube career. <laughs> <laughs> it's a... Uh, it is quite disconcerting. I mean, on the scrapboard build off, I told you at one point mine nearly went in the bin, and that was that would have been tricky because I'd shared so much of it up until that point. 
<laughs> was that what forced you to actually push on? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> At least part of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I think I showed most of the mistakes in the video as well. So, but, yeah. yeah, it's all, it's all just... Maybe we could have become better at it, at least myself, because you, you do your project and you do a lot of fuck-ups, at least I do, because I do not have a plan. I just know what I want to have roughly at the end, and then I start making something, and I do a lot of oopsies, and then I just have to do something else to cover it up. And, of course, in the edit, you can kind of make the narrative turn out the way you want it to so you can skip that part where you act, almost accidentally cut your hands off uh, at the table saw and uh, <laughs> the, do the dodgy move you do with the nail guy <laughs> so, so uh, yeah could have uh, either be more transparent in the process or have a highlighted reel afterwards this is this is how i almost died <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean that's more fun than bloopers and that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So people can guess during the video how many times did Hover almost die this time? <laughs> the right answer? Three. <laughs> I have tried it sometimes to have a counter uh, on the screen counting whenever I say something or do something, but yeah, almost death counter. It should like ding. <laughs> But then it it should be a running counter then for an, an entire year. So in January I can start just having that counter in all my videos. So, I mean, if it's the fourth video and it's the seventh time you almost kill yourself, it's like ding, eight kills. <laughs> you could uh, set set your video up as a set your nine lives up and call it cat lives or something like that, and just see if the cat survives by the end of the video. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the, the maker lives. But I mean, we I got a we got a picture today from Siam, was it, uh, urging us all to use protective gear because I interpreted the message that he had spent some time at the emergency services. But the picture he showed yes. us we were with the goggles on, so I did not really like. Did you put on the goggles afterwards before you went to the <laughs> emergency room? Or <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should really have PPE. I mean, I slipped with the angle grinder the other day and uh, just a centimeter of the disc just disappeared in an instant and sprayed all <laughs> over, yeah, partly my face. <laughs> uh, Gosh, yeah. Because, yeah, I, I, I touched uh, the edge of the uh, of the vice. So it, <laughs> and apparently it doesn't like to be forced sideways when you have a cutting disc. Uh, no. <laughs> So then it felt really good to have glasses on. No, I actually, I have, I think I have three or four pairs of of glasses scattered around. Of course, I can't find any of them when I need them, but I've, I've become better at it. So I, I try to use it whenever I do work with something that can fly around it workshop. But still, it's like at the end of every process, it's like, oh, I'm just gonna. And that is, of course, the, the entrance to any fuck up. Uh, I'm just gonna, uh, yeah. and then of course, oh, I don't. I'm just gonna do this. So, I, uh, and the glasses are over there, and it's like, and then you do the safety squint, and I mean, usually it turns out okay, but sometimes you get some scares. So I, I have become better at it, but still not perfect. I'm absolutely hopeless at wearing PPE. I I wear reading glasses for in the workshop so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, so I've always got a pair of those, and I have got a pair of safety reading glasses, but they give like a goldfish bowl effect when yeah. I look at things. So I don't like I don't like those. Um, but other than that, it's just the ear defenders for me. But then I never worry about it too much. Today, for instance, when I'm at work, I'm working on a snowy bank with a chainsaw, cutting down small trees, slipping all over the place. So. <laughs> <laughs> the workshop just seems really safe to me. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like a bad yeah. comedy sketch. <laughs> <laughs> I can very much picture you sliding around in the snow and just cursing and waving a chainsaw around. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, as well, as I mean, it's hundreds of small trees, you know, with diameter branches up to, uh, sort of diameter trunks up to about three inches. And you're cutting them off, and obviously you can't cut them off at soil level with a chainsaw. Because as soon as the blade hits the soil, it blunts the chain. 
so they're all about six inches four to six inches above the soil level <laughs> so you're making it slippy and then you're creating hundreds of trip hazards <laughs> and something nice to land on as well <laughs> something nice to land on yeah yeah nice and sharp yeah it's great and, uh... like a spike <laughs> pit for yeah. catching wolves or something like that so you know the, the workshop's just a safe place for me to go <laughs> it's better than work <laughs> Yeah, I did, get a, yeah. Uh, I did get a shock this morning. It started snowing last night here. The weather, the temperature has really dropped um, since Monday. But it started snowing last night. And this morning we woke up to a couple of inches of snow. So, we, you know, as a gardener, I'm thinking, well, that's me not going to work today. So I just settled back. I thought I don't need to ring anybody because, you know, they can see it snowing too. <laughs> and they know what I do for them. <laughs> And then I got a call at nine o'clock this morning. Are you on site yet? Oh, no, it's snowed. <laughs> it's like, oh, I've got stuff for you to do. Come on in. <laughs> Come here and shovel. <laughs> yeah. Come here and cut things down on a, on a snowy bank. <laughs> so, yeah, I had to go to work. I was just contemplating going in the workshop as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fucker. <laughs> I saw the stuff made here uh, did a video where it disassembled a, a Form Labs uh, 4 3D printer, I think it was. But uh, related to that, they talked about what um, what temperatures it was rated for. And they said, but yeah, we we tried it down to 18 degrees C, you know, an unheated workshop. And I thought, <laughs> Americans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who has an 18 C unheated workshop? <laughs> I, I've currently managed to get the office up to 15 degrees at the moment <laughs> with the heater on full blast. <laughs> we have come to that point where, okay, if I know I'm going to do something that requires me to sit still, I have to go down there half an hour before and turn the fan on and the heater. Uh, and I started contemplating last year to put in one of these panel heaters because we have one in every uh, other room of the house which is wife by controlled so I was thinking should I buy one used to put down in the workshop because then I can remote control it if I'm all right I'm going in the workshop in half an hour and just go on my phone and turn the heat off yeah but then there's the issue of uh, like of course I have to finish every night by uh, using the compressed air to blow dust from it so you don't accumulate the uh, <laughs> wood shavings and whatnot of the burner elements so maybe I should get an oil oil filled uh, oven and use that one as my workshop that doesn't uh, sound doesn't sound like a good thing to have in a workshop that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean my what... workshops why not my workshops really well insulated and just a, a small electric heater warms it up in a few minutes in there it's nice in there the office is not so good though i've got to say yeah, yeah but i wouldn't put an oil fill does that does that not give off fumes and no, not a... not an oil film oil filled fill sorry that's what, that's what I yeah no, just a radiator with oil in it oh, oh not, not some kind of burner or something oh okay <laughs> <laughs> oh i get you oh, yeah yeah well yeah that being said, though, of course, I could probably put some insulation on my garage door. That would help tremendously. But it, it's not big, so putting a, a heater on for like 10 minutes is good enough. But it is in the colder days. If you're having a fan on, you're going to hear it on video, so you have to turn it off every time you're going to film. And if it's like yeah. minus 10 degrees outside, then if you turn it off for five minutes, then it's starting to get a bit chilly, so you have to turn it on again. and wait for your fingers to warm up and then you do filming for five minutes and you <laughs> turn it back on again so that uh, that's a hassle but i have been having a thought because i've seen a lot of diesel heaters uh, online lately and it turns out that um what's the company called it's not Eberspresser, but it's the other one uh, that makes uh, diesel furnaces for cars and whatnot um, and their patent went out last year or something like that so now everybody can make uh, the same kind of heaters that they do so now you can get a, a diesel heater that usually costs 
if it says Webasto on it, it costs like a thousand pounds, but now you can get them on AliExpress for like 97 pounds. And I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where people are testing them and they are like identical, probably made at the same factory and they work flawlessly. So you just have a little portable diesel heater with a, a small diesel canister on it and you just need a 12 volt battery or whatever to make it uh, make it tick and then should I have that in my workshop because it comes with an integrated remote and timer setting and everything but then again you need the hot exhaust outlet and as you mentioned then <laughs> a dusty workshop might not be the best place for one but I still want to buy one though just I have to find an excuse for it <laughs> you want to buy all the stuff yeah, that's true, and it's it's, it's 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 Chris it's Christmas soon, so I need to make a list, and of course I have to buy all the things that I don't get for myself. So yeah, yeah, I actually resisted going to the um, woodworking show in um, in York. I think it is Harrogate, sorry, near York. I resisted going there because um, too much stuff to look at, tool wise, yeah. <laughs> and too many bloody old men in the way as well. <laughs> 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 yeah that's true I've, I've started to i have a few tools on the list that i have shared uh or made into a list so i could share with my wife if you want to buy something this is a good selection because she does the same and i made a list on my phone with everyone i need to get a gift and just start hammering in things as i get ideas and then I have to ask someone, okay, what, what are the kids into now so I can get gifts for that and so on. And the plan is when I get home from vacation, I'm going to spend uh, the next week of uh, completing that list and just order everything online and get it shipped to me because I'm not setting my, my body in a store after 1st of December, at least, <laughs> at least not a shopping center or anything like that. So, yeah, I'm ordering in this year. Have you not started your Christmas shopping already? Well, I have a few items uh, already, but oh, okay. yeah, I haven't. I haven't started the the majority. Of course, I'm always procrastinating. But, uh... Yeah, and Michelle does all hours. <laughs> yeah, luckily. Uh, yeah, I have a nice split with my wife. She uh, she handles all the present to her side, and I handle <laughs> my side of the family. Uh, that is. That's a roughly a 50-50 split, so it's a, it's a good... Of course, she could happily have done both, I think, but... Yeah. Yeah, if we do then, something similar. Then I, then I would owe, owe her, and then I had to pay for it in some way, so... <laughs> <laughs> Can't you pay her in hell quarters? <laughs> yeah, but it's a hard currency, I mean, it's... It's like one Bitcoin. It's, it's only one, but it's worth a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's hard to make fractions of it, yeah. Oh, maybe I should do that. It's like uh, I should make Hellcorder shares and I could just uh, get, all right, uh, you're getting 10 Hellcorder shares for Christmas. So now you have a, like a, a bail bone certificate or something like I own one tenth of a Hellcorder. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it being much like the stores here that most of our stores won't accept American Express and have signs saying they won't ex won't accept American Express, and I would imagine your wife has a sign that says I do not accept hell quarters. <laughs> that it's a that's a bloody good idea for a sticker because going in around in Rome, I see a lot of stickers. I'm like, oh no, I should have brought stickers, but yeah. Having the Hellcorder sticker with like we don't accept Hellcorders as payment. That that's a bloody good sticker that is. <laughs> no Hellcorders allowed would be another one. <laughs> Imagine trying to get it through customs. <laughs> what the hell is this, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Sending it through the machine and like a lot <laughs> lot of pipe shaped stuff. A lot of wires, <laughs> timer, and a computer circuitry. Like, yeah. <laughs> it would be flagged, yeah. definitely. I had uh, had yeah. to come and explain something. But I'm thinking, like, <laughs> what does it do? It's 
What does this do? It's just a guitar amplifier, basically. No, not with this much stuff in it. <laughs> not a chance. But that, that's the thing, though. I mean, two minutes into explaining it, it would be like, all right, you can go. This is too dumb to not be true. <laughs> I mean, if you were going to blow something up, I mean, you wouldn't go to this length of a dumb idea to try to explain it. So carry on. No, it if if I were custom customs at that point, I would check everyone else's luggage really carefully be, because you were obviously the one that we're right. supposed to yeah. focus on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good point. <laughs> okay, there's something fishy. Everyone, back to the back to the line. We're doing everyone once more. But you know that's a fucking brilliant idea. I'm gonna. I mean, it is needy based. So as long as I can get the bellow system running, I could. I could put it on the wheels and I could just drag it along in front of me on the uh, Scotland Festival and like a plinkety plonky machine and people like, oh, there's that Hellcorder guy again. <laughs> Starting a rivalry with the plinky plonky, you following him around all the time and playing. <laughs> yeah, we could have, uh... and Then we get a third guy following you around and so on and so on. And soon everyone is just walking around with weird instruments. Yeah, and then it. you can set up a whole new channel and TV series, Battle Instruments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, was, I, I was thinking me and the Pinkety Plunkety guy, we could do like a dueling banjos, like uh, a playoff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm thinking over the top drama, like in the wrestling, we have uh, uh, heels and heroes and everyone hating each other and a lot of lots and lots of drama. Yeah, this, yeah. This is a great idea. A lot of <laughs> if trash. only we had the time to realize it. A lot of, lot of trash talking and yeah, Camp Hellcorder versus Camp for Blinkety Plonk. <laughs> 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 Maybe it's a good thing we don't have too much time on our hands. Because <laughs> I think so. <laughs> for everyone's sake. So, but it's very interesting uh, when we're on the subject of Christmas, though, because. Um, I ordered some parts, expecting them to come very close to Christmas. And of course, uh, one of the parts is a Christmas project. Uh, and suddenly, I think I ordered them on uh, a Thursday, and they arrived like Wednesday uh, and Thursday, the week after. So it took about a week to get them from AliExpress, and all the parts came. And, and one of them is the circuit board I'm going to use for the die-hard Christmas tree decorations. And of course, I need to get my other projects done. But once I'm into, uh, yeah, I'm guessing two weeks into December, I'm going to have the 3D printer running, making that uh, metal duct conduit from the movie. And I'm uh, just going to put the sound module in it. So that's a project I'm looking really forward to. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> but what I, and I regret not buying more of those soundboards because they were, they were dirt cheap. So of course, once I had designed them, if I print one or if I printed five on the 3D printer, it, it wouldn't differ differ much. So I could actually give them away as Christmas gift. But I mean, it's I think it's too late to order more parts now. But maybe next Christmas I have some uh, good Christmas presents to give away. Nice. Well, I don't think I'm going to get much time in my workshop this week. Um, Michelle's already threatening she wants some time in there, which is fair enough. She's been busy doing other things, so she deserves to do something she wants to. <laughs> and I have got to... I haven't got to. I'm going to help Steve uh, build a deck around his old recording studio at the house he used to live at, which he still owns. Um, so we expect we're due to start that on Saturday, but the forecast for heavy rain, so maybe I will get some workshop time after all. <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't get any, any workshop time this coming week. I, I feel like I'm going away on a work thing, and yeah, yeah I think all the time is going to be eaten up this, this coming week, uh, especially with the podcast to edit as well. <laughs> But is this the yearly Christmas event that you are so joyously looking forward to every year? <laughs> uh, no, that's in uh, two and a half weeks or something like that. Uh, yeah. So so where are you going away with work? Uh, we're just going away to uh, have a, 
uh, owners meeting, uh, if that's what it's called, because we're the company that I work for. We we own ourselves, so I'm I'm actually one of the shareholders, really minority one, but still. <laughs> so we just uh, go away and have uh, whatever it's called when the shareholders get together and talk about uh, the shareholding. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Um, I'm I'm, I'm kind of new to this. I don't know. <laughs> But it's going to be nice to meet all the a lot of colleagues and that sort of thing. Uh, but it would be nice if it happened any time else in the year because November has been at least the second part of November is full as it is in the calendar. So yeah, I mean usually if everyone looks at November and thinks, oh, this is a great time to do stuff before before uh, before Christmas, and you, usually you, half of the stuff. Is at the same time as something else. So you can just say, oh, no, I can't do A because I'm doing B. But this year, everything aligned. So you didn't really have an out to to not attend. Yeah, but so, still, I mean, yes. I know I, you can pretend. <laughs> everyone thinks that November is, all right, it's the perfect month to get things done before Christmas. But of course, everyone is thinking that. So everything happens in November. And... To be honest, 70% of those things don't even need to happen at this side of New Year's. So, but it is yeah. something like, oh, November is here. Now we're going to get shit done. No, you're not, because everyone is thinking that. So nobody's getting anything done, and it's just going to be total chaos, and then you express before Christmas even starts. Um, yeah. <laughs> Such is life. That was a depressing note. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, it's time to leave the main episode, isn't it? <laughs> Sounds like it. Yay! Mm, so, <laughs> no going back from here. <laughs> okay. Then have a good one, I guess. Bye. <laughs> have a good November. <laughs> 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 Trying to get Bye. shit done. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>